Well, good afternoon to you. Thanks for joining us today, the intersection of faith and culture. This is the Meeting House on Faith Radio. Great to welcome to the program Christine Soule. She is the founder and CEO of a ministry called Providence Heights that is based in Washington State. She is also the author of a brand new book, and it is entitled Broken and Beautiful, Let God Turn Your Mess into a Masterpiece. Christine Soule joining us today here on the Meeting House on Faith Radio. Christine, uh, Christine, great to have you along today here on the Meeting House on Faith Radio. So great to be here. Thanks for having me. Well, God has done an amazing work in your life. As I mentioned, he has led you to start a ministry. It is called Providence Heights. He's given you this book, Broken and Beautiful. And as we just give our listeners some background, the opportunity to know you just a bit your life before Christ was, people could describe it as being dysfunctional, challenging, if you will. So tell us just a bit about what life was like for you before you came to know Christ. Yeah. So as a child, it, it was pretty difficult for me. My father was uh, divorced from my mom when I was about five years old. He was married eight times. My mom was married four and just, yeah, a lot of dysfunction. Um, my mom, who's my hero, she worked about three different jobs, just trying to keep a roof over our heads. So I just always, um, I appreciated her hard work. I never um, blamed her for not being there, but, you know, I essentially raised myself from about the age of five on just because she was trying to provide for us So. Um, at about the age of 10, I started doing drugs. At 17, I was pregnant. At 19, I had uh, identical twin boys. And um, after that, I started doing meth and was trafficked, abused, and living a gay lifestyle. I mean, I just was an extremely angry, bitter woman. And yeah, so life was kind of crazy. There was actually a point, I think I was about 16 years old, and my, let's see, he would have been my third father who actually adopted me. He was the one I really felt like, wow, I have a daddy. Um, this, is, this is normal. And so he actually ended up having an affair with my sister, and they ran off and got married, drained the bank account. We lost everything we had. And yeah, by law, my sister was my stepmom and my father was my brother-in-law. So, oh my goodness. Yeah, it, it was like a bad country music song. <laughs> so in this unstable home environment, as you mentioned, you turned to drugs at a relatively early age. You, your first pregnancy was a, at age 17. You had twins less than two years later. You became involved in human trafficking so, Christine, what was the breaking point for you? I, I sense that you came to a point where you said life can't really go on this mm -hmm. way. Your, your trajectory was certainly not in a positive direction. So tell me about how you are or how you came to know Christ and he turned your life around. Yeah, well, at age 21... I was just in a really difficult place and hated the world. I wanted to claw men's eyes out. I had such a disgust for men. Um, and, you know, one day I just fell to my knees and I cried out to God. And I said, if you are real, take my life. It's yours. And I utterly surrendered my life to him. And, you know, I so tangibly felt the power and presence of God that I went and I threw the drugs and alcohol away. And, you know, where I should have had a heart attack for, for stopping drugs like that, instead, I never had a desire, temptation, or withdrawal. I was completely and totally healed. And, you know, I think something important for your viewers is, you know, at that point, here I was with three children in a, in a mini skirt and a low cut shirt showing up at church. And needless to say, I did not fit in. And, you know, that was a really hard season in my life because I was so desperate for the Lord. And I think a great opportunity for people to know is if, if someone steps into a church and they might not look or act the way that you want them to, 
lead them, lead them. Because if they're stepping in a church, it's because they're hungry for the Lord. And, and you know, that's, that's part of our responsibility is to feed his sheep. And uh, that has been a real passion of mine is, you know, to take maybe the unlovely or the unlovable and, and really guide them so that they can know our loving Savior. You are listening to Meeting House here on Faith Radio. Christine Soule is joining us today. She is the founder of a ministry called Providence Heights. She's the author of a book called Broken and Beautiful. She and her husband live in Seattle. They have kids and two grandchildren. And Christine, you were talking about your introduction into church. Obviously, your background was one, as the title of the book implies, of brokenness. You had had certain instability in your life, but you were seeking out Christ. You wanted to come to know him and grow in him. Tell me just a bit about your church experience and how it is that you really got plugged in, if you will, into the body of Christ. Well, you know, I... After that experience, I stopped going to church because I, I just really didn't feel like I belonged. Um, but I, I kept seeking the Lord. And, you know, there was a point where I was had my three babies. I was bouncing from house to house, couch to couch, not knowing how we were going to survive. Um, and I found out my bills one day and I had $40 to my name. And I was like, I don't even know how I can put a dent in any of this. And so I sat there like, gosh. God really saved me before. I wonder if he could help me with this situation. And I wrote a check for $40. I gave it to this one person. And I just said, hey, you know, can you just give this to your church? He thought nothing of it. He didn't know it was my last penny to provide for my babies and, and no means to, to provide for them further. And, you know, um, that man is the man that I married. And we've been married for 23 years now. So that's really, it's, it's his love for Christ um, that, that, you know, really helped me to trust in the church and really grow in my faith through, through the body of Christ. Well, in light of all you had been through, tell me just a bit about how you came to know Christ better, how you really began to grow in mm. him and what you saw him do in your life. Yeah. Well, we, we call that sort of saved, <laughs> we sort of saved, but it was actually a passion play that I went to. And, and I sat there, I didn't even respond to an altar call. I didn't do anything magical. It was just sitting in my seat, watching a passion play. And I realized for the first time, hang on now, like Jesus died for me. He died for me. And it became very tangible and very personal. And it was that Easter, I got a, a Bible for my own, for myself. And I just, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. I, I couldn't get enough of the word of God. So I would say um, through prayer, through just saturating myself in the word and, and getting connected to um, just a fellowship of believers, you know, through church, through ministries, that kind of thing. Well, you've written this book called Broken and Beautiful, Let God Turn Your Mess into a Masterpiece. Share with me about what it was that inspired you to tell your story. Well, you know, I didn't want to tell my story because of my children. I wanted to, to guard them and protect them. There was also a lot of shame involved in that. You know, those are not um, things that people really want to reveal about themselves. But what I started discovering is that when I started sharing my message, how much people were being set free. And, and then I still hesitated because, you know, this is a girl who didn't graduate high school. Uh, you know, English, I avoided with everything in me. <laughs> so <laughs> to be an author is a little bit different. Um, but, you know, when we decided to do Providence Heights, I wanted to really, number one, it was originally to make it a curriculum and to raise funds and awareness for Providence Heights very quickly realized this is, you know, I might not get everybody inside Providence Heights, but many people's lives have already been touched by the book. Well, tell me about how it is that Providence Heights came to be. And of course, tell us what is done there. Yeah. So I was actually, yeah, I'll, I'll back up a hair. Um, you know, I went from extreme poverty 
to marrying a man who owned a software company with the biggest heart in the world. And so I, I went from poverty to uh, opportunity to have a spirit of generosity. And, and we have lived for 23 years, a life of philanthropy and generosity. And so we were quite content with that. But I was driving down the road one day and, and felt like God said, turn the car around, go talk to that woman. And I'm like, what woman? And I, I turned my head and sure enough, there's a homeless woman sitting on the side of the road. We talked for about two hours and she literally shared my exact same story. Identical twins, number of kids, like everything. It was, it was scary. Got into the car, weeping, and really felt like the Lord was saying they need four things. They need Jesus, someone to believe in them, training and education, and they need an opportunity. And in that moment in my car, almost three years ago, I said, yes, Lord. So today we have just gotten the keys. January 4th, we got the keys. On the 8th, we did a dedication. And on February 1st, we will begin to house women and children in need. So we are very different in the, the way that I describe it is, you know, I think all of us have come to the edge of the cliff at some point in our lives and our next critical steps will determine whether we start to fall off that cliff and people are throwing ropes. They're throwing ropes. They're amazing. It's beautiful. But depending on how far those women have fallen will really determine whether we can pull them up and whether they even have the strength to hold on. So what Providence Heights is, is we're a guardrail. We stand before that and say, you know what, listen, there's other options. You don't have to take that road. You don't have to fall down that cliff. You know, how about this opportunity? How about we try this avenue? And, and really, we just create um, opportunities, entrepreneurial skills. We teach them how to build websites or do marketing. If they want to start a business, we can help them start that, help them with school path decisions. And so that's really the focus. The housing is great. That's a place to breathe, regroup, save. But it's the, it's the entrepreneurial skills and really drawing out their gift and calling that we know each and every woman has, has had, God has instilled greatness inside of those women. And so it's a matter of just discovering what that is and helping them walk in it. Well, you're listening to Meeting House here on Faith Radio, the founder and CEO of Providence Heights, the author of the book, Broken and Beautiful, Christine Soul, is joining us today here on the Meeting House on Faith Radio and this image. And I think it goes back to your own story of being on the cliff, on the, on the edge of the cliff, and really perhaps in a position to go off the cliff. And sometimes people will get into a position, as you were sharing with us earlier, where you're on that cliff and you need you need a helping hand. People are are throwing ropes at you, but you really need something to something stable to hold on to. Of course, we recognize that in Christ we have His resources that are available to us. So, Christine, for that person listening to our conversation today, that might can relate to being in that position. Perhaps she or even he feels like his or her life is, is not in a good place and perhaps is, is feeling like he or she is going off that cliff. What biblical perspective can you share with that person? Mm, wow. There's hope, number one. Mm. There's hope. Uh, I would say that the first scripture I ever learned was to trust in the Lord with all your heart, lean not on your own understanding and all your ways, acknowledge him and he'll direct your paths. And so, you know, that's one of our focus is helping to direct the path so that people will know, you know, he's the lamp into our feet, the light into our path, that he can lead, guide and direct us if we surrender. I think that our biggest key in situations and areas of struggle is, is a surrender, that, that I think is the most beautiful thing where God is like, okay, finally, now I think I could do something with you. <laughs> and, and it's, I think our own stubbornness and pride that prevents that. But when we truly let God in, when we truly allow him to be the king of our life, that's where he can really do the transformation that, that I think all of us are seeking. Well, a couple of Providence Heights questions here as we wrap up our conversation, you are talking about getting the keys just a couple of weeks ago to around the beginning of January. So tell me about what you see as the, the structure for what is going to take place moving forward. 
Yeah. It's a light structure because we are not there to babysit them. We're there to launch them into their destinies. And so, you know, they have to actually be prepared and ready to make changes in their lives. If they're not, if they're not ready to make a change, then it's probably not the place for them. Uh, but our structures will have curriculum. We'll really help them with financing, budgeting, um, just logical steps, and, and really a discovery process of um, giftings, talents, personality traits, you know, areas that they would uh, really fit in for, for job skills and training. Um, we'll do chapel. And it's very much Christ-focused. And so we'll have uh, different activities, prayer groups, things that they can join um, much will not be required, but chapel will be required as well as our curriculums um, will be required. And yeah, we just trust that they can self-govern themselves um, and that they're in a place where they're just ready to make those changes. Well, you have a special event coming up in the not too distant future next week, as a matter of fact. So tell us just a bit about that, because it's something in which people can participate virtually, as I understand it. Yes, that's the beautiful thing about all of this is now all of you guys can join us in this, <laughs> this amazing party. We are having an epic grand opening virtual gala, and that's really the launch of our program. And so I would love to have all of you guys join. It's January 30th. It's four o'clock central time. And we will have speakers like um, Secretary Ben Carson will be sharing. Uh, Kathy McMorris Rogers is a congresswoman she'll be sharing. Um, we'll have Steve and Jackie Green, the, the owners of Hobby Lobby and founders of Museum of the Bible. Uh, Stephanie Whittier, who's head of Morgan Stanley. Um, we have many, many uh, just wonderful guest speakers. So it's going to be uh, an event to remember. And we've got a lot of um, interactive uh, games, like things that we'll be sharing. So this will be a really fun event. I would love to have you guys join us. So how can people connect for that? Yeah, so you want to go to providenceheights.org and then just click on the events page and you can register right there. Excellent. Christine Soul joining us today. Broken and beautiful. Let God turn your mess into a masterpiece. And Christine, if people want to connect with you, I know you have a website as well. So what is that website address? Yeah, that's christinesoul.com. It's, right. it's like heart and soul and then add an E. Add an E. There you go. Christine Soul, S-O-U-L-E. Dot com And Christine, it has been wonderful to chat with you today. Thank you so much for sharing what God has done in your life and also sharing about this ministry, Providence Heights. Joining us from Washington State today, Christine Soule here on The Meeting House on Faith Radio. Thank you so much. Thank you. Appreciate it.